Great. Look, my peers, number three says, find the magnitude and then the direction of the first force which must be added to make the resultant force zero. And then look here, different forces or three forces is given to us. As I'm really sure this force is the best example for concurrent forces or concurrent vectors. It represented the concrete vectors. And how? To do first, to find the force vector, first we have to find the resultant vector of the three vectors. And how? What we have to do first, we have to find the component vector of each vector. Look, now first, F1x or x of F1 becomes yeah, sine 53 degrees equal to opposite over hypotenuse, and then cos 53 degrees equal to f of x over f, and now so f of x1 is equal to simply f times cosine of 53 degree. f1 is a steady newton which is given to us. Cosine 53 degree is definitely 0.6. Just multiply and then it becomes 6 newton. And then this dx along d, I mean the component of x of vector 1 or force vector along the positive x axis. Because magnitude is 6 newton. And then f of y1 becomes simply f1 and then sign 53 degree. This is given as usual 10 newton. And then uh, cosine, I mean sine 53 degrees is 0.8. At the end, we will have 8 newton along the positive y axis. Correct. On the same manner, we have to find the components of the, for the second force vector. Now look, f x of 2 becomes f2 and then sine 45 degrees. F2 is definitely 10 newton. And then cos 47, I mean 45 is 0 0.7. And then it should be positive 7 newton. And then it lies along positive x axis. F of y of 2 becomes simply F2 cosine of 45 degree, which is 10 newton times 0 0.7. And then which is, since its y component is lay along the negative y axis, and hence it should be negative 7 newton. The same method or the truth for the third force. F or x of 3 becomes, yeah? F3 and then cosine of 7 degree. F3 is given, that is why you can. Times cos 37 is 0 0.8. And then it becomes 1 6 newton. But it slaves along the negative x axis and it, is, it should be negative. F of y of 3 becomes F3 and then the sine of 37 degree. F3 is 20 newton. And then the sine 37 degree is 0 0.6. And then it becomes is 12 newton. But it should be negative. Great. Now, We have to find Rx, Ry accordingly. So Rx is nothing, it is F1 of X or Fx1 plus Fx2 plus Fx3. Fx1, look this one, positive 6 
plus f of x2 is positive submission. f of x3 is negative this much. It's a newton. And then it becomes neg of 3 newton. Which means the resultant vector lies along the negative one x axis. And then r of y becomes f of y1 plus f of y2 plus f of y3. Our f of 1 is this much, a newton. Plus, and then our f of y2 is neg of 7 newton. Plus, neg of this. And then it becomes neg of 11 newton. Look, guys. Both x axis and then y axis. Or the value of the x value and then the y value of the resultant vector lays on the negative x and then negative y axis. And then at the end we have to find the resultant value for those. Now we have dog. We have three units along or three newton along the neg of x direction. 3 newton. The new the, the resultant vector of the three vectors along the x-axis is 3 newton and also to along negative x-axis. And then its y value is r of y is neg of 11 or simply 11 newton. And then the resultant of the resultant of neg of 3 newton and then neg of 11 newton becomes this y. And then this is can be done by using the Pythagorean theorem. And then it becomes simply r is equal to under root of square of this plus square of this. And then this becomes neg of 3 newton the whole square plus neg of 11 newton the whole square. And then it becomes 130 newton. But it should be negative. And then the force vector, the force resultant vector will be the force resultant vector will be under root of 113 newton. And the angle will be it be theta, beta, gamma, something. But beta is very simply the inverse of neg of 11 over neg of 3. And then this becomes tan inverse of 11 over 3. Thank you. Guys, this is number 4. It says, look okay, here, the square of the cross product of vector A and B plus the dot product of vector a and b is equal to dash. Great. To do this problem, we have to remember what we have learned about cross product as well as dot product of the vectors. And as in short, this means, as you know, magnitude of vector a, magnitude of vector b, and then sine theta along any certain any direction the whole square plus this means simply magnitude of a magnitude of b and then cosine of theta the whole square where this theta is the angle between the two vectors and then this is the standard stool in a certain direction. And now, so the dot product of uh, this will be 1. So, no need of putting it here. And then this becomes, yeah, square of, this becomes AB, the whole square, 
and then square of sin theta plus and then this becomes square of AB and then square of cosine of theta. Are we seeing AB, square of AB, square of AB is common in both products. So what we have to do, we have to take and then the AB as a common square of AB under bracket square of sin theta plus square of cosine of theta have you remembered do you know the exact value of the square of sin theta plus square of cos theta which is definitely one this is no now to give it a and the z the value of this becomes simply a b the whole scale. Thank you for watching this. Great. Thank you, my dears. Thank you for watching this video. We will make another video. I will do so many problems. Okay, accordingly. So we will see you on the next video. Please like. Subscribe and then please put your comment. Thank you, my dears. Bye bye.